Hey guys, my name's Aaron from Geek11 Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. And in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to add in-app emailing to your applications. Now, what this is gonna give us the ability to do is share content directly from within our app. We're gonna set it up where we're gonna have a label being displayed within an application, which is gonna hold a piece of text. Now, this can be anything from content such as high scores or any random information within the app. We're then be able to press a button, which will then loads up our Mail Compose View Controller, which will populate our email with the content within the label within our app and give us the ability to send it to whoever we like via email. So let's jump straight in to it. Okay then. So the first thing we're going to do to set up our in-app emailing is designing our interface. So we're going to jump into our main dot storyboard. I'm going to quickly change the view now into the attribute inspector to an iPhone size screen. And we're going to add in now a few objects which will allow us to trigger the in-app email interface to load up, uh, get ready to display before we can start emailing whoever we want. Now, like I said before, we're going to be setting it up where we're also going to have the ability to add content from the app and add it into the email we're going to send. So we can basically share content from within the app. So how we can do this then is we're going to have a button which once pressed will trigger our in-app email, our mail compose uh, view controller to load up over our application ready for us to send the email. So if I rename this, send email and we're going to place in the label now this label it's very important because this is the label that we can have in our application which will whatever's being displayed within it so let's just say hello let's do it in all capitals it looks pretty good hello that we're going to take the text from that label and integrate that into our email to send to who basically whoever we want. So think of this label being, uh, let's say, if you're playing a game and your user's finished it and then you give them the score, you're displaying their score on the screen within the label in your application, then you can allow them to send an email to their friends, their family, to simply check out their high score. So the text within the application, we can share it. Maybe you have like something like a joke generator application where you're generating jokes or even facts. You can, again, you can share it with an email. You can share the content within the app within this email. And we're gonna use this label to basically demonstrate this. So we're gonna load up now our assistant editor and our space at our outlet section here and our action section. So we're going to drag and drop in the label and create an outlet. I'll just simply call it label so we can reference it and get the text that's being displayed within it. And in our button, we're simply going to create an action for it. And I simply name it send email. There we go. Okay, so we've got those both in. We're now going to close our assistant editor, back to our stand editor, and we're now going to configure our in app email. So to give our applications the ability to send emails directly from within the application, we need to use and rely on a certain framework. And this framework is called the Message UI framework, which has all the capabilities, all the stuff we need to allow us to send emails directly from within the application. So click on our project name and then go to Build Phases, drop down our link binary of libraries and click that little plus symbol. To simply start to type out message and then the message UI dot framework will appear and add that into our app. So once that's in, we jump into our view controller dot Swift and we're now going to import it into this view. So this view basically knows that this framework exists. We can reference then all the stuff from within it. So we import our message UI framework. We also need to add after the UI view controller to so do a comma space the MF mail compose view controller delicate. So this will give us the ability to load up this email view over the top of our application, simply use it to send the email. Okay, so now we've got that set up, we're now gonna trigger the email to load. So when our user presses our send email button, we wanna configure the email. We wanna get it all set up and then present it to our user. But there's a few little configurations we need to kind of create. So first, who are we sending the email to? So we can set up 
uh, a number of receptants. We can do uh, create an array uh, to have multiple emails we can send it to, or alternatively, you can have it sent to one email, or even leave it blank to allow your users to add in their own email address. So then think of it this way. If you have a predetermined email within the receptants to who they want to send it to, Let's say you're creating a business app and you want your users or customers to send you an email from the application. You can have the recipients uh, predefined to have your email address in. It's very dynamic like this. So we're going to create a variable within it. And we're simply going to call it uh, recipients. There we go. And we equal that simply to an array. Now, if you just simply want them, the users to place in their own email addresses, they want to add their own, their own friends or family or anything like that, then you can leave between the two quotation marks completely blank. Or if you want it to have a predefined email address you want them to send the email to, maybe it's your own, then simply type it out. So I'll do abc at 123.com. So I've completely made that email address up. Now, if you want to add in multiple email addresses, you just simply do a comma, space, two quotation marks, and add in another one. If you want a third, comma, space, two quotation marks. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. So next, the next thing we need to um, kind of configure is the title of the email. Now, just like the receptants, it's dynamic. You can either choose to have text within it, allow your users to add their own, have predefined text. It's entirely up to you. So we create another letter and call it title and have this equal a string. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just simply have the word title being displayed within the title. So when we come to build and run, you can see where that text is being placed. Then comes the message body. So this is the whole body of the email. This is the content that we want to display within it. And we're choosing to share the text that's being displayed within the label. So if we get our let and call it our message and equal this to this time, our label dot text. Now that message within our message body is this simply going to equal whatever text is being displayed again within the label. Now if you want to have more than just that within the email, maybe you want to say um, a few words before or anything like that, you just don't want it to simply have whatever's being displayed in the label. We can change this again completely up. So if we get rid of what I displayed in there, maybe your label is displaying the high score. So you can place in two quotation marks and say high score and have that linked to our label.text. So even though the label.text has got the word hello in it, you can kind of see how it's going to be configured when we go into build and run. So that's how you can then combine the text of the label in the string. Now you may notice we've got a few errors here and that's only because we're not referencing any of these lets slash variables within our code. So we set that up. We're now going to then uh, get up our mail compose view controller and add all these variables to our email. So we create our let and we can call it MC, which is short for mail controller. And that's going to be linked to our MF mail compose uh, view controller mail compose uh, view controller just there there we go and then that is going to equal our mf mail compose um, view controller again then we're going to get our mc dot mail compose delegate and then equal that to self which will allow us to load the view over the top of our application then mc again dot set recipients and you need the one that says set to receptants. And we're going to equal this to our uh, variable, our let we created above of receptants. There we go. Which that now removes the error or the kind of warning from that variable because we're now referencing it. Then we go to our MC again to then simply set the uh, subject, which the subject is going to be our email uh, title, which we'll just add that into our title up above. And that again will get rid of the warning. And then finally, our MC dot message body. And again, this is then linked to the message body we added in just up above. So we type in our message that it's linked to is HTML. We're going to do false, leave that nice and blank there. And there we go. You can see it's removed that final warning. So now we've configured our email with those three variables, we can then present the email to the user. 
So we do self dot present uh, view controller. And in the first highlighted section here, we have MC, which we added and created our mail controller. Animated, we're going to select to true. There we go. And in completion, we're going to simply create that as nil. So there we go. We've then presented our email to our user, which is going to look great. Uh, the only problem we got now, once it's presented, we can send it, we can choose to cancel. We just can't dismiss it from our application. So we're going to quickly go and build and run to see how it looks before we then go on to add the ability to once we've either sent the email or cancelled the email, we can dismiss it and go back to our application. Now there's one problem you're going to occur with in-app emailing is it kind of doesn't work on the simulator. I'm not sure why, I'm not sure if it's down to a bug or the capabilities of the simulator will not allow this. So when you go to build and run and try to send an email, on the simulator, it's going to crash your application. So I just want you to be aware of this. So you just so you don't think you've done something wrong. So the best way to do it is to test it on a real device. So I'm going to mirror my device's screen uh, on the screen right now and test out and see how the in app emailing works. So as you can see now, I'm now airplaying my device's screen onto the screen as you can see. And we have our label that says hello and our send email button. So we've only got it configured at the moment to load up the email and populate all the fields with information. So if I go to press send email, and just wait for it to pop up now. So you can see two receptants is to abc at 123.com, which is what we sell it to. Uh, you can see who it's from, which is my own email account already linked in. The subject, which is linked to our title, which we added in. And then the message says high score, and it says the optional with the brackets there. I can just get rid of that there by simply putting an exclamation mark there for the optional wrap. So if we build and run once more, you can see how that looks then. So we're back again. I've added the exclamation mark there just for the optional wrap. So when I send email now, you can see it says high score colon space hello, which is how we set it all up, which is what the label displayed. Now, like I said before, we've got it all loaded up, but we cannot dismiss uh, from the mail view controller. So if you even press the send, or if you even cancel the email, and I like delete the draft, the view still remains here. We don't have the ability to remove it from the screen. But the main thing is, we know it works. We know it's all set up and it populates correctly. So back of the next code, we're going to create a function statement. And this function statement allows us to trigger actions depending on the kind of state or the result of what the email done. So we simply start by typing out mail compose view controller and we need the one with uh, did finish with result, which is that one just there. And I'll space out this section here so we can see it. So we're going to be creating a switch statement. And for every result that could happen with the email, we can simply create an action. Now, we don't really want to create an action for each single one, but we're just going to have it print in the debug area what actually happens. So it's up to you with what you want to do. So we start by creating our switch statement here, and it's going to be linked to our result dot raw value. Now, in the first case, we're going to set it up, and let's start with our MF uh, mail compose result. Just find it now if we can quickly see it. So MF mail compose, there we go, result. And let's start with the result was cancelled. Dot raw value. And then our space is out so we can clearly see it. So if the email was cancelled, you can then get it to trigger an action. So maybe it does something. But for this purpose, we're just going to get it to print in the debug area simply cancelled just like that. Now if I copy this because there is a potential to have four all together. So we're pasting the four there and scroll it down and change this one from cancelled to simply failed. This one from cancelled to simply saved. And then this one from cancelled to sent. So you can see we have four kind of results that could happen. The user could either cancel the email. Maybe it's failed to send the email or the user saved it or simply sent it. So whatever the outcome with the user doing something, you can place where the print line is here 
to simply trigger an action. So let's simply change up what all these are saying. So they're saying this correct thing. Saved and finally sent. Now, no matter what happens after the default here in the code, we're going to add in our break. No matter what happens after this bracket here, we're always going to get self dot dismiss view controller animated. We set to true completion. We set to nil. So no matter what happens, we're going to dismiss it from the view controller anyway. So even though it's going to read this switch statement and trigger one of these to print in a debug area, whatever happens, that's just to show you how you can perform actions and set things up for no matter what happens. Maybe you can add in a few alerts for if it failed and tell them why it failed. But no matter what happens, it's always going to dismiss our Melv Compose view controller from our view. So now when we go to build and run, again, we're going to have to mirror my device to the screen. You can see once it loads up, I go to send email. And it all comes up there. We have the ability uh, to, we can even add more text in to the email. It's entirely up to us. We can change anything we want. I can either choose to cancel and delete the draft, which when I do that, you can then see it says at the bottom, it was canceled in the debug area. Or if I go to send the email, send it, it then says sent. But both of them, no matter what we did, it always dismissed the email view controller from our application, allowing us to return. So there we go. So there we have it. We now have the ability to share content directly from within our application via email. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you leave a big like down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, just before you go, I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial. And if you did enjoy it, make sure you click that big like button down below. And if you'd like to further your knowledge and progress within iOS 9, Xcode 7 for Swift 2 and Objective-C, where you can learn how to create 20 real life applications. Links for these will be below in the description of the video. And if you'd like to learn iOS development on the go, then make sure you check out one of our many iOS applications where you can learn how to create applications again within Objective-C and Swift. The links for these will also be in the description down below. And I'd just like to say one last time, if you did enjoy this video and it did help you out in any way, make sure you hit the big like button down below on the video and make sure you check out our website, geeklimmer.com, where you can find the full source code for this tutorial and all the others we offer. And make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter so you can keep up to date with what's coming here at Geeklimmer. So once more, let's thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.